Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here today. We are back on PTCGO taking a look at some more team up content. So today we are going to be taking a look at the new Beedrill. And this is honestly, it's going to be kind of more of a fun deck we're looking at. I don't think this is going to be, you know, dominating the competitive scene or, you know, making top eight or making day two, any regionals coming up or anything like that. This is definitely more of a fun archetype. Definitely has some pretty good aspects going on with it, which we'll kind of explore here in more detail for this deck profile. Uh, but overall, you know, this is probably not a top tier deck, but still a pretty fun one. So let's take a look at and see how the deck is going to look. This is a Beedrill deck, so we need some Beedrills. We are playing a 4-4-4 line of Beedrill in this case. And we're really just looking at for this first attack, Destiny Stinger. You can only use this attack if this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, but then both active Pokemon are knocked out. So we've kind of seen attacks like this in the past. I believe there's an Absol that's still in format that has an attack kind of like this, but it's like at the end of your opponent's next turn, they get knocked out. There's been another Beedrill that has an attack kind of similar again, but it's like on the following turn, you can knock them out. So usually these attacks like this are kind of bad, but the fact that this one will knock it out in the same turn is pretty important here. And I think that's actually pretty powerful, especially once you start looking at some of the exciting new cards that are coming into the format. Like, just take a look at all of the tag team Pokemon. If you can just use this attack to knock out a Beedrill and then get three prizes just for a single attachment, that's that's pretty powerful, guys. And I think that is something that is kind of worth exploring here. So that's going to be really the whole, you know, idea that the deck is based around. But I do want to point out some other things really quick about the Beedrill line. We are playing the one or the Weedle from Team Up, 50 HP, 20 for just a colorless, does 10 to itself. You know, this attack has some synergy with Beedrill. You do need damage on your Beedrills. Uh, granted, we do have plenty of other more efficient ways to get damage on our Beedrills. But nevertheless, this Weedle does have some synergy with the core strategy of the deck. That's why we are kind of favoring this one. Uh, more importantly, though, we are playing four of the Kakuna all the way back from Crimson Invasion, and that's because it has this attack called Multiply. So for a single Grass Energy, search your deck for up to three Kakuna, put them onto your bench. So this will, if you guys have been playing for maybe a couple years now, this will look very familiar, very similar to the uh, attack that we had on the Frogadier that had Water Duplicates in the old Greninja archetype. That's how Greninja would typically get set up. They, you know... Uh, they decide to go forego any rare candies and things like that and just aim to get all of their stage ones and play with an attack like this. So that's what we're doing here. We have no rare candies in this deck whatsoever. It feels almost kind of wrong uh, being a channel called rare candy and not playing any in a stage two deck. But uh, I think this way is probably going to be a little bit more efficient in this case. Uh, so that's going to be our Beedrill line. We do have some other pretty integral components of this deck, though. Next up, we have a 2-2 Shed Engine line. So this is a Shed Engine back from the last set, Lost Thunder. And we're using it for this attack, or I'm sorry, this ability, Vessel of Life. So you can discard all cards attached to Shed Engine and attach it as a tool to one of your Pokemon. And then when that Pokemon gets knocked out, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So this is pretty big because we... You know, if we're knocking out our Beedrills, we are giving up prizes in the process, going back into our opponent's turn. So that's pretty bad because we knock ourselves out, then it goes to our opponent's turn, and it gives them a chance to take another knockout back on us. So Shedinja is going to kind of even out the prize trade there and ensure that we're not giving up prizes whenever we attack with Beedrill, if possible. And then, uh, you know, another, I think, downside to Beedrill, like I said, is that you're knocking yourself out, going into your opponent's turn. So that means after Beedrill gets knocked out, we have to promote something, uh, you know, in between turns for our opponent to attack into. Unfortunately, in standard format, our wall options are pretty limited, but I think our best option here is going to be Shuckle GX. So we're playing this. This is kind of our ideal wall to throw forward after uh, our Beedrills get knocked out, and that's because it has this ability, Protective Shell, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon that have two or fewer energy attached to them. So ideally, you know, we can throw this uh, active, and then a lot of decks won't be able to actually attack into Shuckle outside of maybe some of the heavy energy acceleration decks. So it's not an ideal scenario. Um, you, you know, I kind of wish Hoopa had a one retreat cost. That way it could be used a skateboard, but unfortunately that is not the case. So Shuckle is our only option right now, but it's still pretty good, especially against a number of different decks in the format, like Lost March, a lot of the, you know, Baby Buzzwool, like Garboder style decks. Uh, even Zora Arc, just as an example, this is a pretty good ability against a number of different decks, but I never, it does have a couple of matchups that is not that great against it. 
But uh, luckily, I think most of the more energy acceleration based decks are going to be GX heavy decks, and that's where Beedrill can really shine anyway, so I don't think it's too big of a deal. But Shuckle actually has some pretty good attacks on it as well as Triple Poison for a Colorless, uh, three damage counters in between turns for Poison instead of one, so that's pretty decent sometimes, especially if we are going against some of these single attachment decks. Uh, triple Poison can be a nice way to whittle away at their HP. Wrap GX also a pretty decent GX attack just for a colorist is 40 and auto paralysis. So it's not too much of a heavy hitting Pokemon, but sometimes it can be annoying enough to kind of buy you some turns. Uh, we also have one copy of Ditto and we have one copy of Marshadow. We play no copies of Tapu Lele whatsoever in this deck. And so a big reason for that is because we are trying to, you know, be prize efficient you know we're trying to only give up one prize at a time and we're going to have to give up prizes going into our opponent's turn so we really don't want any excessive uh gx's and two and three prize pokemon on our field for our opponent to pull ahead in the prize trade that's why we're not playing any copies of lele just the single copy of Mars Shadow for that let loose ability potentially bail our hand out of a dead hand sometimes so going on to the supporter count, uh, this will look pretty interesting because we aren't playing any copies of Lele. We need more actual physical supporters in our deck. So we're playing a good bit here. We have four Cynthia, four Lele, pretty standard options. Two Erica's Hospitality, new supporter we're getting in team up. So another strong mid-game draw option we have at our disposal here. And then two copies of Tate and Liza as well. So just, this one's, you know, kind of our least favorite supporter we're going to see in the deck but it does have some uh good aspects to it just a nice shuffle and draw five it's decent and then it does give us the option to switch so sometimes if we can't find an escape board sometimes tate and liza can provide the switching effect that we're going to be looking for uh, so that's going to be our supporter count for draw supporters then just two copies of guzma to choose what we're going to take knockouts on would like a third copy in here but a lot of the times Every turn, we're basically just trying to dig and trying to hit pieces that we need to get our Beedrills into play. So you really can't make great use of Guzma a lot of the time anyways. So that's why we're only playing the two count. Uh, going on, we have kind of an interesting ball engine too. This is going to be probably a lot closer to something like Lost March as opposed to maybe a more traditional deck. So if you'll notice, we have four copies of Netball. Definitely the best uh, search card we have in the deck. Search a deck for a basic grass or... Uh, basic grass Pokemon and then put it into your hand so we can grab of course our Ninkatas, our Weedles, we can grab grass energies uh, as well so just a really nice flexible ball card it's really our ideal card we want to see it on the first turn if possible as well we have four copies of Great Ball initially I did have Ultra Balls in this list but I really found that there weren't a whole lot of resources I really wanted to get rid of so I opted to just change them to Great Ball uh, that way we can preserve our resources in the deck and Great Ball usually gets the job done anyways, especially if you draw into multiple of these in a single turn. It's a lot easier to play multiple Great Balls in a turn as, it, as opposed to Ultra Balls in this deck. Like I said, just because there's not a whole lot of targets you actually want to discard. And then from there, three copies of Pokemon Communication. So we play 20 Pokemon, so I think that's enough to really get effective use out of this card. Of course, it's a new card. Well, actually, it's a pretty old card, but it's been reprinted in Team Up. You reveal Pokemon from your hand, put it into your deck, then you search your deck for uh, a different Pokemon and shuffle your deck. So we have a ton of search just because we need a ton of Pokemon into play at a given time. So we need, like I said, lots of ways to get them out. We don't play Elm's Lecture or anything like that as well. So that's another reason we do need a heavy uh, like ball count and search card count here. Uh, we also have two copies of Rescue Stretcher, kind of a higher count than a lot of decks play. A lot, a lot just play one, but you have to think we are discarding our Beedrills every time we attack. So we are going to need more Pokemon recovery than your average deck. And then from there, I believe the last trainer card, or last item, I should say, two copies of a skateboard. So it's going to reduce our retreat cost by one. This is ideally for our shuckles. We knock out our B drills, promote shuckle, and then with the skateboard, we can freely retreat back into another B drill for the following turn. And I think the last trainer card we have here is going to be three copies of Poe Town. This is going to be one of the ways we're trying to get damage counters onto our Beedrill. So whenever a player evolves one of their Pokemon, put three damage counters on that Pokemon. So 
you guys can see the synergy there. And then to round out the list, we have four copies of Grass Energy and then four Rainbow Energies as well. Rainbow Energies, of course, this is going to be the way we are trying to get damage counters onto our Beedrill if we can't find our Potowns as well. So between this and the Potowns, we have plenty of outs to fulfilling the requirement on Beedrill. It's normally not an issue in my experience. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's going to be the list we're going to be trying out for Beedrill here. Like I said, this is probably not going to be a super competitive deck, but uh, you'd be surprised by how many games you actually can win with this thing. Uh, but let's head over to the battle portion of the video, and I'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, just loading up a game here. Our opponent's going to call the coin flip, which we do win. Definitely good with a deck like this. If anyone's ever played Greninja, you know how big going first is just because... We don't have rare candies or anything like that, so we really need to make sure we have uh, that extra turn to get our Pokemon evolved before our opponent can get set up here. And it looks like we do have a half decent opening hand. We have Netball, and our opponent's gonna open with a Trico. So curious what this is. This very well could be Sceptile, uh, but we have seen people run uh, like a Grovile line in a low Executor deck, so that is also a potential option as well. So here we're going to go for this Ditto here. That's a, a Pokemon that's not quite as easy to search out as some of our other basics. So we want to get that out there as soon as possible. And here we were fortunate enough to top deck a Lily as well. And I'm going to hang on to that Poe Town there. Really not sure what we're playing against. So I kind of want to, you know, hold some of these resources a little close to our hand uh, before we see what exactly we're going up against. So here, we'll just attach to the Shuckle. That is fine by me here. Uh, worst case scenario, we can actually just attack with Shuckle if we need to. So here, I'm going to get down a Fomantis. That still doesn't tell me too much. Right now, I'm thinking this is going to be my boy, Septile GX. Because typically, I feel like the Executor decks don't play for... Well, I may have spoke too soon. Um, we're seeing a Shrine of Punch, but come to play. So this is... This can't be a Sceptile GX deck. Our opponent, you never know, they might run a Sceptile GX in here, but uh, I'm pretty confident at this point this is going to be like an alone Executor uh, heavy deck. If that's the case, I actually feel like we're in a pretty good spot here just because alone Executor is going to attack for a single Grass Energy, and Shuckle, of course, is going to be a pretty good wall against decks like this. So let's see, we're going to Great Ball first. And we do find Beedrill. It's really not what we want to see. Um, might just grab a Nincata or a Weedle. I think either of those is fine. Because right now I'm thinking we're actually not even going to use Kakuna's attack. I kind of want to just go aggro Shuckle here just because it is a pretty good attacker in this matchup. So here we're going to Netball. We're going to grab ourselves a Grass Energy. And so here we'll get that down on Weedle. I think we're gonna, going to... Yeah, we'll play the Erika's first. We'll hang on to the Potown. All right, and then we'll just evolve into Kakuna. That seems okay. Or we could spread our resources around a little bit just in case of a Guzma. That, that's fine by me too. And here we'll put down the Po Town, bump that Shrine of Punishment. That way Shuckle doesn't incur any more damage. And we'll just go for a Triple Poison here. And so kind of force our opponent to retreat this Trico or at the least find a Grovile to get rid of this Poison. So let's see how our opponent is going to respond. They, you know, what's nice about this for us is that, like I said, our opponent's going to need three manual attachments on Executor to be able to even attack into Shuckle. Here, our opponent's going to get rid of Life Force. Kind of a bummer, but that is fine by me. We can actually abuse the Life Force to heal this 10 damage if we choose to. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying to the Executor, it's going to need a lot of energy in order to attack. So it gives us plenty of time to set up our board, plenty of time to find Guzmas if we need to. And I imagine we'll probably see a Sunshine Grace here, but what does our opponent get? That's going to be the question. I might imagine another Execute. I think that could be fine. Or maybe they could even go for a another Grovile to evolve the Ditto, and then use that to get another Execute. That way they can search two Pokemon every turn. But here they're gonna go for a Shuffle. Okay, just opting to thin some cards out of their deck, get some energies into the discard pile. So Shuckle has an ability, Juice Extractor, I believe it is. 
something like that, or Juice Squeezer, something like that, and it's going to allow them to put three energies into the discard. So Lone Executor, of course, is 20, plus 20 more for every energy or a different type of basic energy in the discard pile, but they can't add more than, I think it's 100, I, I forget off the top of my head, but they do have a uh, damage cap here. Or maybe it's like they can't add more than 120, that actually sounds a little bit more correct. But here we're going to make use of that Life Forest, we're going to use Netball, grab ourselves another Grass Energy here, and just trying to think, I guess we can attach to Kakuna, I guess that's fine. Um, yeah, I think we can bump the Life Forest here. Yeah, that seems pretty good, because we're going to start poisoning this Grovile again. Uh, we don't want our party to be able to heal that off. So here we're going to go for a Pokemon. What do we do? Um, We can go for a Pokemon Communication, put Shuckle back. So I'm just trying to think what do we get. We either get a Shedinja or we get another Kakuna. I think those are our two best options. Because if our opponent has Guzma, uh, we kind of prefer the Kakuna. But at the same time, if we go for the Shedinja here and get the shed engine down even if our opponent guzma is like this kakuna they still don't even get <laughs> a prize so i don't really mind that too much either i think either one is probably fine here i, I don't think it's gonna be too impactful either way shed engine could be good at least uh denying a prize though so we'll go ahead evolve into beedrill why not and here we'll throw down the uh, Shedinja and use that Vessel of Life ability, attach that to our Beedrill. So like I said, even if our opponent does have a Guzma to knock the thing out, well guess what, they don't even get a prize. So really not too worried about it. So here we just, um, we just go for Triple Poison. I think I want to save Rap GX for, uh, like if our opponent ever throws up an Executor that has like two energy on it, uh, I want to save our Rap GX for that type of turn um, to maybe buy ourselves a turn uh, to where an Executor 3 energy can't attack us or something like that. Or if we need it to take like a crucial knockout. So let's see, we are going to see a Sunshine Grace. I'm um, guessing we are going to see an Execute or another Alone Executor. That seems like a safe bet. Or, again, I think there's a case to be made to just grab another Grovile if our opponent does play a 2-2 line. Because if they go for the second Grovile, they can start searching two Pokemon every turn with Sunshine Grace. And I actually think I would have liked to have seen that last turn. Like, instead of going for the Shuckle, I think I would have rather have seen uh, them go for a, another Grovile to evolve Ditto and then search out the Shuckle. That would have got one more card out of their deck. Uh, in this turn, they would have been able to search for two Grass Pokemon, which would have been a bit nicer. So here we're going to see a Sceptile. Okay, not a card I'm really too worried about in this matchup. We don't play any Ultra Beast, and Sceptile also is going to attack for just a single Grass Energy. So really not a Pokemon I'm too worried about knocking out our Shuckle GX here. Okay, we are going to see them evolve it, so probably just trying to keep their Grovile from being knocked out but going back into our turn. That's definitely not a terrible idea. Now, unfortunately, they're in a position now where they can't use Sunshine Grace, so again, I'm assuming they do play a 2-2 line of Grovile in here. I think I would have rather seen them evolve the Ditto, then go for the Sunshine Grace. That would have allowed them to have a Grovile for the following turns as well, to keep searching out those Executors and Executes and things like that. Okay, but they do have another Trico, so... Um, I guess they are going to attempt to stop another Grovile at some point as well. And just a pass, so kind of a slow start from our opponent here. We're going to go for a Netball. I think we're just going to grab ourselves. Well, um, never mind. We don't have another Shedinja. We have a Shedinja prize, but we could still go for it. I don't think we're in much danger right now of being knocked out by stuff, so... That's fine by me. Just in case of a Guzma or something like that on our Nincadas, we'll have another one ready to go. Here we'll Great Ball, grab ourselves, well, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we go for the Cocoon here. I was going to say, if we don't have a Draw Supporter, we just keep more Shadow in hand. But here we're going to evolve uh, this Weedle. And we're just going to go for another Triple Poison. So just kind of taking our time. I really don't mind here. Um, 
not really too worried about this set tile. Our opponent needs to start finding some energy to start stacking on this Executor though. It's going to be pretty big. They're going to need that to, uh, in order to take a knockout on our Shuckle at some point. But here's just a pass back over to us. So, hmm, that is a little bit rough. All right, so here, what do we do? Could evolve this Kakuna. Like, I guess that's okay. And here, like, I also kind of just want to save this hand, to be honest. We have Guzma, so, uh, I I mean, even though we could Guzma up, for example, exactly for that turn, take a knockout with Beedrill, really don't want to. I really want to wait till our opponent commits a second energy and, you know, threatens the, uh, you know, that third energy to knock. So I want to, I want to basically deny them an extra energy in the process. Okay, so here they're going to promote Trico. So they must not have much going on in their hand right now. And again, this is another situation where I wish they would have really, you know, gone for a second Grove Isle. If it's in deck, they could have it prized for all I know. Okay, and here's what I was talking about. They're going to commit the second Grass Energy. That's actually pretty important too. And where is he? Choice Band. And just to pass over to us. So yeah, this is definitely our turn to strike here. We're going to throw up this Beedrill. And just use Destiny Stinger here. So, yeah, we're going to knock out our Beedrill. And of course, since we have the Shedinja, our opponent is not going to get a prize, but we are. And nice, we actually get our other Shedinja. It's pretty big here. So, that's <laughs> that's pretty big. Uh, actually, just do want to give a sh quick shout out to our opponent for like continuing to play this game. Because I think our deck is probably really favored here. And they're also... Okay, they do have something. I was going to say, they're also not drawing too well at this point. Um, I probably would have ended up just scooping or something if I had been on there. And so, big shout out to them for actually playing out this game and giving us a game to record here. So, let's see. They're going to get down a Grass Energy on this Execute. That's fine by me. Uh, we have another uh, Guzma in hand. So, just waiting for them to attach yet again a second Energy. And then we're going to make use of our other Guzma here. All right, we get Marsh out. I really don't want to play. I really do like our hand. I really don't think there's much we want. So we're just going to go ahead and attach this shit engine to our Beedrill. That way our opponent, if they do have a Guzma, uh, they're not going to get a prize in the process. So they basically have to choose, do I want to take a prize or do I want to take out this Beedrill, which is kind of a looming threat. So here we are going to see a, another Grovile, okay. And we're going to see a Sunshine Grace. Got to see what are they going to be going for. Going to go for another Aloan Executor, okay? Seems half decent, I suppose. And here, they've already gone through two Grass Energy. They probably play six to seven, if I had to guess. So this is going to be their third one. We're going to see an Ultra Ball as well. Let's see what our opponent's going to get here. And interesting, they did discard the Psychic Energy instead of attaching it. I think that's actually pretty big for us. Or, well, did they... Did they attach that Grass Energy this turn? I forget already. Oh, and they do have a Guzma, so very interesting. Alrighty, so if that's the case, I... You know, I don't mind that too much. You know, it is annoying that we are going to lose a Beedrill here. Uh, but our opponent does not get a prize, and we still have Shuckle. So, I still like the spot that we're going to be in overall. So, here, I think what we do, we finally start playing some cards here. We're just going to go for a Cynthia, I think. Uh, we need to start setting up another Beedrill for at some point. We need some Rescue Stretchers. Okay, that's actually really good. We got the Rescue Stretcher. So, we'll go ahead and evolve our Kakuna here. And so we're gonna shuffle in. I think we do, we definitely do at least one Shedinja because we still have an Ankata in play. But I think we go for Beedrill and maybe Weedle just to increase our odds of finding Weedles throughout the course of this game. That seems pretty good. And we do have this Pokemon communication. We could, I mean, Getting two Shuckles in play, I think is definitely good, but I don't think we need the other Shuckle just yet. I think I'd rather prioritize setting up 
um, you know, something else at this point in the game. So here we're just going to get Shedinja. And we're going to use Vessel of Life, attach it to Kakuna. So yet again, if they do have a Grass Energy uh, and a way to, you know, attack it into this thing, we are going to be able to at least not give up a prize in the process. So here we're going to use Triple Poison. And I feel pretty good about the spot that we're in. If our opponent does commit a second energy, we're just going to use Rat GX. Uh, but here they are going to be setting up another Executor. Definitely a decent idea. Here we're going to see another Sunshine Grace. Let's see what our opponent is going to find. They could find another low on Executor. They could get Lorantis. Okay, Lorantis seems like an okay idea. If they are ever able to attack into Shuckle, Lorantis is going to help them do a little bit more damage and potentially knock us out in one hit. And here we're just going to see Tropical Shake. That is fine by me. And nice, we hit a Great Ball. Yeah, we'll get Shuckle, why not? We can pretty safely bench it. Uh, it's definitely going to be useful at some point if our opponent can ever knock out this Shuckle. And nice, I actually do like this hand. So we're going to shuffle three Pokemon. Definitely going to do, I think, one Kakuna and then a 1-1 one, one Shedinja. That seems pretty good here. I don't think we're going to need too many more Beedrills. I think if we can set up just two more Beedrills, I think that's all we're really going to need. Because I think we can do most of our damage here with Shuckle at some point. And here just debating, do we actually evolve into it just in case of a Guzma? We don't want to like just get rid of a Beedrill for no reason, but it's fine. And so here we could go for a Rat GX and just take a Knockout here. But... At the same time, I think it's probably maybe just getting... Or wait, because that'd be 30 from Poison. Yeah, that would be a knockout. But here, we're just going to kind of play it safe. I think we're going to do the smart thing. I think we can afford to take our time here. Because like I said, I want to save Rap GX. If our opponent ever does commit like two energies to an Executor... And we don't have a way to knock it out at the time. I want to be able to save that Rap GX for something that's going to be threatening us. So here we're going to see Sunshine Grace. Let's see what they're going to get. I'm going to guess another Executor to Evolve Ditto. That seems like a safe assumption here. Okay, just going to get another Execute. Beyond that, I really don't know what they can do. I didn't... We know one of the cards in their hand is an Execute, but beyond... Okay, they're going to go for a Guzma, so they're going to attempt to kind of stall us here, but I really don't mind too much. Uh, the only thing annoying that is annoying about this is that the Executor was going to get knocked out, and now we don't have that option. So here, I think we're just going to go for the Erika's. I don't mind burning this Rainbow Energy. Oh, but we do find the Escape Port, though, so that's actually completely fine. Kind of bummed we did not find, like, an Encada or... You know, something like that, but uh, I still think we're in a pretty commanding spot at this point. So here, we use Triple Poison. This is actually pretty good, too, because Shuckle has 60 HP, which means that he'll actually get knocked out going back into our turn, allowing us to attack something fresh. So I'm, I'm just really not sure if our opponent is going to have a way to actually pull this out here. Let's see, their, their life force is gone. Here they are going to get that second energy down on Executor. So here, this is what I was saying. I want to save that uh, that Rap GX for this exact type of situation. Here, they're going to throw up Lorantis. That's fine by me. And yeah, we'll go for a Guzma. Definitely want to knock this thing out. And this is actually a situation where I don't really mind using Rap GX. So, because, yeah, we'll do that. Oh, wait, you know, we, we should have probably played the Great Ball in hand. I just realized we had that. Got, I think I got a little excited about the Guzma, but you know what? I think we're still in an okay spot here, but yeah, we definitely should have played the Great Ball. My bad, guys. Just a little uh, lapse of memory, I guess, there. But let's see what our opponent is going to do here. They could, you know, if they do play Septile GX, they could try to, like, deck us. We only have seven cards left, and if they just go, like, kind of a healing route, 
Oh, but here we do finally get the victory screen. Uh, I thought that was going to be kind of inevitable, but like I said, big shout out to our opponent for actually playing that game out. Uh, hopefully we can get ourselves a like GX matchup in one of these next games. Uh, just because, you know, we have outs to some of these non-GX decks, but Beedrill really shines when you go against two and three prize attackers. So let's see what our opponent's going to have here. Okay, we're going to see a match card, so this could be like Zora Art Gyarados. I think that is definitely a potential option, but um, my, my gut tells me this is probably going to be the Gyarados from Team Up, just because people have been excited to try out new decks on PTCGO. So here we're going to yeah, I guess we'll get Potown into play. We can... I think we just Cynthia here. Alright, so we do find two Weedles. And actually probably should have attached that Grass Energy in our last hand to this Ditto. I don't know why we didn't do that. So, my mistake, guys. And unfortunately, this hand is pretty terrible. Uh, now, the good thing about this is we can retreat this Ditto with this Rainbow Energy... Or not even retreat, we can evolve it into a Kakuna with this rain and then use the rainbow energy to use Kakuna's attack, then some cards out of our deck. And here, you know, they're going for the elm, getting four magic carps and, and see here you can you can see the Gyarados they're getting. So uh, I have to imagine this is gonna be a pretty annoying matchup for us. So here we can just evolve into Kakuna. And I guess we can Guzma, I suppose. Honestly, it probably might have even been better just to leave the Vulpix active. But here we're going to go for two Kakunas, put them onto our bench here. So at the very least, we are thinning some cards out of our deck, which is, I guess, nice. But this feels really bad. So our opponent, they get to look at the top seven cards of their deck. Then they're attacked as like 30 plus 30 more, I think it is, for every one they reveal. So yeah, everything we have is definitely going to be getting knocked out here. We do get an escape board, um, but I think I'm fine just letting this Weedle get knocked out. Kind of want to save this Kakuna in our hand, just in case of like a Pokemon communication. I want to have an out to grabbing our Mars Shadow. You ever see that Crash Away? They're going to get two cards out of their deck. Probably just some more Gyarados if I had to assume. So this time they are only doing 90, but still definitely enough to knock out a uh, Weedle here. And here, I guess we just sacrificed the Nankata. This feels pretty bad, but we gotta do what we gotta do. And I think we just sit on this hand. Like, the damage is pretty useless that we do, because Beedrill takes one-hit knockouts anyway, so I kind of just want to save this energy in case of Shuckle or, you know, something more useful. So here we desperately need to top deck something. Our opponent's already gone down to three prizes. We haven't taken a single prize. This feels terrible. Oh, nice. We do get Great Ball. And we find Mars Shadow. Whew. Okay. <laughs> that was a little bit scary. Now, we still need a lot here. Uh, we'll get down the skateboard. We can, I guess, attach the Rainbow Energy. That's fine. And then we can just go for... A let loose. We could have evolved the Ditto, but I want to save it for a Shedinja like we have here. And we still have a Tate and Liza we can play as well, which is nice. Uh, we can grab Kakuna, but I really don't want Kakuna here. Really just want to evolve this Ditto. So unfortunately, that was not a great target, but um, we're just going to play the Tate and Liza, just shuffle in, and draw five. Okay, so this hand is actually pretty decent. So here we're going to go for a. I think we go for a, what, maybe a wheel. Yeah, because this way we can Pokemon Communication it back into the deck, grab Beedrill. And so this way we can take a knockout. And we have Shuckle in hand as well, so we can just throw that active afterwards. So we'll use Vessel of Life here. And just double checking. Yeah, we can use it even if Shinge is active or important. And so, yeah, we'll throw up Beedrill, bench our boy Shuckle here, and use Destiny Singer. So one thing nice about this Gyarados deck is that it is a one energy attachment deck. Uh, granted, the deck probably runs like 30-something energy. So uh, they definitely have outs to attacking into us at some point here. Here we're just going to see a beacon. So 
Uh, the nice thing about this though, Vulpix has 60 HP, so even though the Gyarados is threatening an attack, unless they play some switching cards, they actually aren't going to be able to attack into Shuckle on this next turn. So here we're just going to go for a Lily. And so we do have Stretcher. I think I want to play that before we do the Great Ball, just to increase our outs to hitting what we need here. So we'll go for the Stretcher. And what do we get? We can go... I think we go like Weedle, Weedle, or we do a 1-1 one -one Shadija and a Weedle. I think that's okay. That will work because we still have a Cocoon in hand. Nice. And we do hit the wheel. I was definitely really big here. And yeah, we're just going to go for a Triple Poison. So this is nice because like I said, uh, you know, this Vulpix has 60 HP. So that means they are going to get knocked out whenever they pass back over to us. And then we can attack back into whatever Pokemon they promote, which is really, really nice here. Here we're going to see a Crasher Wake. Energy Recycler, okay. So what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Let's see, a third energy come down, Magikarp, and just a beacon, so they... I guess they didn't have Gyarados in their hand. That's really interesting. If so, that's actually really good for us because we have Guzma. Okay, and we top deck energy, so that's like literally the perfect top deck uh, we could have asked for in this situation. So, do we even play communication here? And I'm thinking we do. I kind of want to set up another Ninkata or this actually could be good too. This way we actually don't even have to burn in energy. So we can just go Kuzma, bring up this Magikarp with three energy, and we can use triple poison. So really big, like, that's just so huge. Our opponent did not have a Gyarados to evolve that Magikarp. Otherwise, you know, we could have used Rap GX, but even still we would have been in a little bit of trouble. So we are going to see Gyarados evolve. That is fine by me, though, just because we can use triple poison and start setting up a KO. Uh, our opponent is going to judge us. Kind of liked our hand. We had a Lily. I mean, I guess that's really the only thing I liked. Okay, and we still have a decent hand. We have a draw supporter. So that's really all I was really looking for. And nice. We actually get a Kakuna. I like that. But we'll communication this Weedle back in. I think we just go for a Ninkata. Start trying to set up another Shedinja. We're going to need that at some point here. And here we'll attach that Rainbow Energy. And basically, we want to just find a Guzma before our opponent can start attacking with this other Gyarados. So we just go for a triple poison here and let this Gyarados start to accumulate some damage. One thing I do like about this, especially compared to like the last matchup, is that Gyarados has 150 HP, whereas Executor in the last game had 160. And so that actually means the math against this Gyarados is really good for us. So right now, you know, whenever we pass, they're going to take 120. And then coming back into our turn, they're going to get knocked out yet again. So the math from Triple Poison has actually been really, really big here. And yeah, I think we just go for a Cynthia here. I want to kind of find a Guzma. And no Guzma there, but that's fine by me, I guess. So I guess we can just go for, I mean... We can literally just pass. We just click triple poison. I think either of those are fine. And, and we did have Beedrill on hand. I think we actually could have evolved this turn. That might have been a misplay or an oversight on my part. But here, uh, our opponent's going to just get knocked out coming back into our turn. So Shuckle has been putting in the work against these like one prize attacking decks. Uh, this Ninetales is going to be a little bit of a pain for us. But we do have a Beedrill ready to go so we can actually... Uh, take a knockout on it. So here, I'm going to use this Vessel of Life. We can attach that to Beedrill. And what do we do? I think I'm actually fine even just hard retreating this turn if we choose to. Uh, we have Netball. We can grab this Weedle. I guess that's fine. So I kind of want to... We can just hard retreat. I think that's fine. And we'll just promote this Beedrill. 
we can use Destiny Stinger and we're at a spot where, well, let's put down another Weedle just in case, I suppose. Oh, I forgot we haven't even played a supporter. <laughs> we'll just Lily for one here. Okay, so nothing too impactful, but just thinning another card out of the deck. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually promote this Marshall just because our opponent is going to be able to attack into us and Marshall is definitely the card we care the least about in this situation getting knocked out. So, uh, yeah, the Scaredus will knock us out, but then we can just knock it out with our Beedrill on the following turn. So, yep, we will promote Beedrill, and somehow we made a comeback after literally just, like, draw passing for three turns. Just Pokemon getting, like, just sacked and knocked out, like, every turn. We somehow brought it back and uh, took a dub against the Scaredus deck. You can see Triple Poison putting in a ton of work that game. Um, hopefully, like I said, we can find a GX, like a more GX heavy matchup here, uh, just because that's where Beedrill is going to kind of show off its strength the best. Uh, we see Zero or a deck box, that's actually a little bit promising, so hopefully we can get paired up against something kind of like that. And unfortunately, we are taking Mulligan, we have to reveal some of the spice to our opponent. They got to see our uh, shit engine there. And. Okay, this hand is not too great. We do have Erica's though, so if our opponent does fill up their bench, we can actually draw some cards. And here, this is going to be an Amolga. That's actually very interesting. So, and we are going to see Trumpy. So, this is going to be Lost March yet again. Unfortunately, this is not a GX heavy matchup. Um, but we do have Shuckle GX, which is actually really good against Lost March as well. At most, they're going to play one copy of Super Boost Energy and could like steal a knockout that way. But I think generally speaking, we should have the advantage here. So we're gonna get, gonna get down a DCE, that's fine. Just gonna search out another Amolga, I guess just to thin out of the deck a little bit. And, ooh, nice. So they can Pokemon communication and we're probably gonna see an Orangaroo or a Marsh out of here. So that's actually fine by me, but at the same time, I kind of did like our hand. They were filling their bench pretty heavily, so Erica's was going to be pretty good here. Oh god, that that is a terrible hand. And okay, we do top deck Erica's. That's actually gigantic. That hand was about to be complete trash. And so we do find a bunch of great balls. That's good. We can find Nenkata. That's fine by me. We can great ball again. Hmm. I think we have to go for Marsh out of here just because we actually don't have another draw supporter. And here, I think we just net ball and grab a Weedle. That seems pretty good. And do we bench Shuckle? I think we do, just because we don't have a way to free retreat. I would rather kind of save the Shuckle, but... Well, we could even still save it, but... We would have to find a Skateboard on our next turn. Because basically, I don't want to reveal that we play the Shuckle, but... Like I said, since we don't have the Skateboard, I think this is kind of the route I want to go. And our opponent only has a two-card hand here, so... I'm not too worried about like a Guzma like energy knockout or anything like that. So here we are going to see a Skiplum come down. So I think they have what like I think they're doing like 80 right now with Lost March. Okay, so that's gonna be a hundred, I believe. Because they've used two Trumbeaks already, then they put the hop up Skiplum in there, so this. Yeah, this should be 120 if I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, and that sucks. They got rid of our Erica's Hospitality. Yeah, we would have definitely loved to have seen that. But luckily, we do still have our Marsh Shadow. So it's really not the end of the world here. Here we are going to see them search out another Amolga. Maybe just a communication in a way. Or maybe use Lost Blender. So here we are going to see them knock out this Weedle. We do have Stretcher, but I really don't want to use that. I want to hang on to that for whenever we can get three Pokemon out of it. So here... Okay, so they're actually just doing... Yeah, they're actually just doing 100. Sorry, I thought it was 120. But here we're going to start evolving some stuff. Um, 
That seems good. And then we'll just more shadow here. And we do get a netball. That's pretty good, I guess. Oh, and we do have Lily. Um, but what I want to do here, and grab another Ninkata. Or we could even grab a Grass Energy, but I think I'd rather go for the Ninkata. We have higher odds of hitting energy off Lily than the Ninkata. So, well, great ball. Go for a Shedinja. There we go. And actually, you know, normally, normally we put Shedinja on Beedrill, but I think I actually want to put it on Shuckle because this is going to be what our opponent is trying to uh, deal with here. But I think I'm just going to go for a Wrap GX at this point, just to prevent them from attaching like a double colorless energy or something like that to their Jump Pluff and knocking us out. Oh, you know, we, we did forget to actually attach a Grass Energy this turn. We actually should have done that because we can potentially make use of Beedrill's second attack. It is 90 for two. So that actually could be good against some of these Lost Marchers at some point as well. So yeah, that was definitely a little bit of a misplay on my part, guys. My bad. I've done that a couple times in this uh, video, just forgetting to play cards. Uh, luckily, we do have this like wall. Uh, for Shuckle GX, so hopefully it won't come back to bite us too much. And just the pass back over to us. So evolve into Beedrill, and I'm actually not even sure if I want to evolve into another Beedrill just yet. I kind of want to wait and get Po Town. So we'll do that. And we do find Po Town, so that's good. We don't have a Hmm. We don't have another Ninkata. Or actually, no, we do. So that's good, at least. Um, in case the Shuckle goes down, we can set up uh, another Shit Engine next turn pretty easily. But here, we'll just bench the Weedle. And we don't need the Potown this turn, so I'm going to hang on to it just in case our opponent plays other stadiums like Shrine or you know something else entirely. So they're going to promote this Mulgat's Fine by me. And even if they do knock out Shuckle, they're only going to get one prize because of this uh, Shedinja. So if, you know, our opponent is dealing with like a horde of one prize Shuckles, I don't see it like working out too well for them. Not in the long run, at least. So here we are, seeing them get some more Pokemon in the Lost Zone. So I'm pretty sure Shuckle's getting knocked out this turn. Oh, and just a pass. So maybe they don't have energy. That's actually pretty big. So here, I guess we will get down a Rainbow Energy on Beedrill. That is fine by me. Put down the Po Town, and I think we're actually just going to Guzma here. This is actually, I think, a big whiff on our opponent's part here. Because if we can knock out this Natu, it's going to be at least two turns before they can actually attack into Shuckle. So we're just going to promote this Beedrill. We are going to have to burn the energy attached to it, but that's fine by me here. Um, we can just... Oh wait, we did use our GX attack already, so that's actually kind of bad. Oh, but we still get the victory screen anyway, so uh, I guess they kind of saw the writing on the wall there. You know, Shuckle is really difficult for these non-GX decks to deal with, so you can kind of see how the deck functions there. I do apologize, we didn't get uh, a, a game against any of these more GX heavy decks. I literally spent an hour trying to find some, but I feel like everyone was only playing non-GX decks. But as usual guys, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.